everyone and welcome to the second Elite Home Tutoring webinar, SAT webinar. Um, my name is Karen. If you weren't here for the previous webinar, let's, um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself again. Um, my name is Karen. I am the Associate Counselor here at Plexus. We have our tutor of Elite Home Tutoring, Christine. She has been tutoring for over a decade. Um, Christine, would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself to anybody who wasn't yeah. here before? Yeah, welcome to you all. And uh, my name is Christine Ferris. I'm in Southern California, Huntington Beach. I got a master's degree from UCLA. And um, when I took the SAT, it was 2,400 points, but you know, it's kind of gone back and forth quite a bit there. And I've been uh, tutoring for the SAT for over a decade. So it's a little about me, yeah. Okay, thank you, yeah. Christine. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you weren't here for our first webinar, I will, it is posted on our YouTube page, on our Plexus YouTube page. I can go ahead and put the link on the chat for you all to access it after, after this um, webinar has ended. Um, we will be having, as a reminder, we will be having these webinars Mondays, Tuesdays, uh, and Thursdays with an exception that this Thursday will be canceled for Friday. Um, this Friday, well, so that, therefore the next webinar will be on Friday at 1.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Christine, would you like to say something? Yeah, I believe it's Monday, Wednesday, and then not, not Tuesday, but not Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. Monday, Mondays, Mon Wednesdays? Yes, I thought I heard Tuesday. Okay, okay, yeah. all right, sounds Just good. All right, uh, so Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, with an exception of this week, it will be Mondays, Wednesdays, and Friday of this week. All right, so with that said, um, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, very good, awesome. Um, how, let, uh, you had asked that people put in their, in their chats uh, their ages, and I think somebody's done that, and their yeah. grades. I strongly encourage um, everybody who is, who is here to um, put their, introduce yourself to the chat uh, by okay. stating your name, yeah. where are you from, and maybe your, your school grade. Okay, awesome. Okay, very good. And you can continue to do that. And if you have any questions, um, as we said last time, you can raise your hand or put a question in the chat box and Karen will relay that. Okay. Um, today, what we're working on is the beginning of, of the st basic strategies for the writing and language test. Writing and language. Yeah, I'm going to assume that you, you were here last time. If you have a question of clarification because you were not, that's totally fine with me. Um, the writing and language is the grammar and stylistic part of the test. The reading comprehension is the first part. Writing and language is the second part. It's the, I, I approach it first because it's the easiest to fix your little errors. If you don't know what's going on with this part of the test, then you, um, you're, you, you're gonna be a little lost, but it's the easiest to improve on. So then I like to, to get that part down. And then once you've got that down, then you keep practicing it. And then you move on to the other parts that are even harder to, to master. So we're working at mastering the writing and language test. Okay. So I'm going to get something else up on the screen here. And there we go. SAT writing and language test, basic strategies. Um, the, I recommend that you, you oh, I got to share it. Right. Minor detail. Okay, let's go back to here. Okay, let me share that. I recommend that you um, get a piece of paper and a pen if you don't have it. And um, let's see, you already got it. There we go. Okay, we looking at the right thing? Yeah. Okay, so you can see SAT writing and language basic strategies on my screen. So my recommendation, first of all, is to get a notepad and pen for notes. Um, and then we are ready to start. Okay. First thing is that the, the writing a language, section two of the test, is 44 questions in 35 minutes. 40, so you want to know your your timing on this. You want to know what you're dealing with. It's, it's a numbers game, but and you also have to know the grammar. 
So if there are four passages of 11 questions each, that leaves you an average of eight minutes and 45 seconds uh, per passage. So you might take longer on some, you might take be slow, slower, uh, faster on others. And so you have to end up with 35 minutes total, but you wanna watch your timing, okay? Okay, very good. Uh, the types of questions that you're gonna see, there's three categories and they're, they're listed as those categories. If you go on the College Board website or you take a test, you will see which, what you scored on each of those categories. So that's important to notice what type of questions you're missing. Okay, so uh, expressions of ideas is the first category type of question. And that's picking word choice, like which one has the nicest tone. And um, the second one is what they call standard English conventions. And those are grammar and punctuation. And those are what we're gonna approach next time we meet on Friday. We're gonna, I'm gonna give you a list of about 10, 12 rules. Make it as clear as possible. Tell you what the SAT does with those rules, how they, they um, can't do this and they can do that because if there's any gray area, they can't test you on it because there has to be one right answer and three wrong answers. So that's really helpful. It's helpful to, to look at a grammar book but there's some variation in grammar books where, where you, oh, I don't, I could put a comma here. I don't have to put, those are not going to be tested. They can't do it. They can't do it. So that's good to know. So we'll go do that next time. We'll look at about 10 to 12 grammar rules. Uh, and then the third category is what they call the rhetorical skills. And those are, should I keep or delete questions or yes or no questions? So you'll get a specific question um, about, a line reference and they'll ask you if you want to keep or delete it and I'll give you some strategies for how to approach those. You're going to go in solid and active with this. Okay, so um, let's do this. I'm going to flip to the directions from the SAT test and uh, we're going to read it now so you don't waste time reading directions on the day of the test. There's absolutely no reason to. Uh, any questions so far? about the three categories specifically or the timing. As a reminder from last session, you can go ahead and do the raised hand option. You can access it by clicking on participants or in the chat. You can also ask me a question directly through the chat or you can send it to everyone. So Christine can see it as well. Okay, if there are no questions, I will get to the test. Let me see if I can do this easily. No? No questions. Okay, great. Thank you. Nope. Okay, let's see. Let me find it here. There it is. Okay. Uh, this is the direction. This is the beginning of the writing and language test. This is a test that you could find online, available as a PDF, uh, from April of last year, April 2019. Okay. Uh, so here's the directions that are the same on every SAT test. Uh, and we'll read it now, so you're not reading it later. Turn to section two of your answer sheet because this is a section two. Directions. Karen, can you read the directions for us? Put that on the spot for you, sorry about that. Yeah. If, there, if it's a problem, then, then uh, let me know. Sorry, I can't. Okay, I'll do, it. I'll do it. I should have asked you before. And I did. Yeah. That was the question. Sorry. Okay, each passage below is accompanied by a number of questions. For some questions, you will consider how the passage might be revised to improve the expression of ideas. For other questions, you will consider how the passage might be edited to correct errors in sentence structure, usage, or punctuation. A passage or a question may be accompanied by one of or more graphics, such as a table or a graph that you will consider as you make revising and editing decisions. Some questions will direct you to an underlined portion of a passage. Other questions will direct you to a location in a passage as you, or ask you to think about the passage as a whole. After reading each quote passage, choose the answer to each question that most effectively proves, improves the quality of writing in the passage or that makes the passage conform to the conventions of standard writing written English grammar. Many questions include no change options as an answer A, which uh, choose the option, choose this option 
if you think the best choice is to leave the relevant portion of the passage as it is. So uh, um, we have some no, the first one is a no change. We'll talk about strategies for these questions in a little bit, um, but that's what the no change looks like. Notice that the, the number that corresponds to the question is in front of the underlying part that that question refers to. If it's not, um, if it states that it's, it's at, the number is after it, it'll have to state it in the question. Otherwise, you can assume it's right after the blocked number. Okay, uh, are there any questions about the directions? That's a no, okay. And we'll just scroll down and we will refer to this toward the end here again. So this is a, one of the, an example of the keep or delete questions that we were talking about, the rhetorical skills. And um, there's a question, and then it's asking you to keep or delete it. We'll work on the strategies for those next time. Um, here's a word choice. So you want to you want to take a look at that. Uh, here's punctuation. Notice what's changing in the answers. Sometimes Christine, there's yes. Um, I believe um, I don't know if this is just a problem I'm experiencing, but oh. uh, we can. I can only see the the um, beginning of the SAT writing and language test. Basically. It didn't move? Oh, it, did, no, it, it didn't it, scroll? It didn't scroll down. I don't oh. know if that's just my problem. Let me turn, let me go back. Sometimes if you stop a video and then start it again, uh, it, it solves the problem. So let's see what we can do here. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Is it any better? It's still not moving. Huh. Uh, maybe maybe I can go ahead and stop your sharing and you can go ahead and share it again and we can see if that works. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, okay. Let, me, let me try stopping it. I'll do it. Yeah. Okay, I'm moving, right? Yeah. Okay, so then let's see here. Okay. Okay. Okay, how's that? Yeah, I can see. Can you try scrolling? Yes. Is it scrolling? It's scrolling. Perfect. Hey, okay. So if that happens again, please let me know and I will uh, unshare, un, I'll stop the video and go back. My apologies. So you didn't, you saw this page, correct? You just saw the directions. Um, it's okay. That, that, yeah, that's okay. We're good. Okay, I'm going to go back to where we were and to, in the sake, for the sake of time. And okay. And Stop share. Okay. I'm getting this down. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that was the directions. No questions there. Okay, that now these notes I absolutely recommend that you that you write down. Very, very important important. Basic approach to writing and language section two. Okay, number one is can you see me? Hello? I can see you. Okay, you can't see the paper though. I can't see the screen now. Okay, there we go. Okay, let me try it again. Okay, there we go. Okay, got it? Yes. Okay, basic approach to writing a language. Please write these notes down. Look at how the answers are changing to get an idea of what concept is being tested. Read actively and that is with a purpose. So what does that mean? Notice what, what's changing in the answers to, to see quickly as quickly as possible what you would need to be tested on. Don't get distracted by, by other things. Reading actively with a purpose means I'm, I'm on it. I'm watching, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm not passive about it. I will waste time that way, okay? And then the third bullet point 
is always, always, always read to the end of a sentence, not just to the underlined portion. Because when you do that, there may be something afterwards that is very important that will make you change, change a different answer, especially when it's regarding to uh, comma rules, semicolons, read it from the beginning of the sentence to the very end of the sentence, not just the underlined portion. I can't stress that enough, okay? Um, the next one is use a process of elimination, which I will uh, call POE, aggressively by looking for the wrong answers and marking them off. So most of the time, big recommendation for this section as well as for the other sections is sometimes it's not that easy to find the right answer, but it's very, it's a lot easier to find what's wrong with something. Check it off. Say, it can't be that because, okay? Um, we'll put this into practice on Friday because we'll be doing some actual questions and, and working with the process of elimination. Okay, the, the fifth bullet point is read your final answer one last time into the complete sentence from beginning to end to make sure it works. If you get stuck, and you're like, I, I can't figure out, read a few lines before and after. That will help tremendously. Um, and then finally, notice the question. What does that mean? That means don't just put what you think sounds nice. Make sure that you notice and, and take note of what they're asking. If they're saying, which is, should this be added for this reason? Okay, that's what I need to answer. So just pay attention to the question and don't just uh, assume that you need to find the nicest one, fill in, okay? Uh, any questions about that? No, okay, did you see, is it scrolling? Yeah, it's scrolling. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one, the four primary rules, these are the basic writing and strategy rules, uh, the four C's to keep in mind when deciding between answers. Okay, number one, is it complete? Is the complete, is a, a complete sentence has no run-ons, so that's complete. We'll go over that in more detail. You have to have a subject and a verb, and not just keep going on and on and on. When we learn those rules for commas and semicolons, these will be easier, okay? So the second C is, is it consistent? What does that mean? Is this sentence or, or a line consistent with the other sentences before and after it? So consistent in, and I, and I do note here, the same tone or style throughout the paragraph of the passage and the same tense past, present, future. So you gotta look around. When you notice those, those differences in the answer choices, you gotta look around that sentence. Is it consistent with the other sentences? Is it clear? Is it clearly understandable in every way? Nothing ambiguous, this is a word in the wrong place, anything. That's what they're testing you on, okay? Be as, as clear cut as possible. Don't be iffy or say, does it sound, it sounds good. They're gonna put traps in there for you, so. Okay, and then fourthly, concise. Is the sentence short, precise, uh, and concise as much as possible with nothing repeated or rephrased that is not necessary, okay? It's important to, again, to spot what kind of question they're asking you and then apply these rules. So remember the four C's, complete, consistent, clear, and concise. Hopefully you've written those down. Any questions about them? No. Okay, awesome. Okay. And then here. Um, actually, I'm not going to quite go to that one yet. And I'm going to try going back to the other. No, I will go to this first. Okay, remember the keys to success while studying for your SAT writing and language. Okay, so step one, keep your notes out to reference them while you're initially practicing for the language section. So when we go through comma rules next time, have those notes out. Don't feel like, oh, I got it. Do I remember it right? No, it doesn't matter right now, especially if you're in ninth grade or 10th grade. Just put those out there. Take this extra time it takes to be sure you have followed the grammar rules. Very important. Step two, once you have the grammar rules down and are getting the correct, them correct about 90 plus percent of the time, then put your notes away to see how you're doing. 
Okay. Did I get that right? Okay. Oh, I did. Yay. Oh, I, I missed it. Now you go back and look at the rule again. Okay. Use the process of elimination. Make sure to follow the other rules. Step three, time yourself. Don't worry about time at first because if you never get your accuracy down, you can't expect to get a high score or a good score. So now that you've got the rules down, time yourself. Your goal is 8.45 minutes, 8 minutes and 45 seconds per passage or less, or less. I recommend using the stopwatch function on your phone or a computer rather than a timer. So you're, you're counting up to 8.45 after a while. You know, if you're taking a full test, then you'll know, oh, when I'm, I'm at, at two passages, I'm about at this, at this time. Oh, I'm at three passages, I'm about at this time. That way you don't go over your time of a total of 35 minutes. And then if you notice, oh, that one was faster, this passage was, was slower, it's okay because your total is still under the, the total max. That's what I recommend there. And, um, and then step four, always go over the mistakes you make very carefully so that you understand a couple of things. Why you picked the wrong answer. What did I do? Was it a trick? Was I trapped? You know, I, I didn't know. And what you need to do, review or learn to pick the right answer, the correct answer. Okay. Then step five, last step, go review those mistakes right before you do, you're doing more practice questions. We consider it a little mini cram session, just like you would do before any test or quiz. So you're saying, okay, what did I miss? Why did I miss it? Boom, boom, boom. Now I'm ready to, to go and do the next one. Um, I, I guarantee that if you follow these steps, your score is going to bump way up, way up. Okay. And um, I also recommend as, as far as, and I talked about this last time, as far as using practice tests from either the college board, they have uh, eight available for you there. And uh, also online, you can find practice tests from, uh, from uh, websites that like this, this April test is listed and a few others. So then you're using real material. Uh, for a book that I recommend, I recommend um, also the Princeton Review book, which is very helpful, cra cracking the SAT premium. Um, 2020 version is just as good as the 2019 version, has four tests in it. And uh, those are helpful. And it, the explanations are very good. Okay. Any questions about the steps? Keys to success. Remember, you can raise your hand. You can send a chat to me directly or to everyone. Okay. And what I want to do, and you're still welcome to, to raise your hand. Here, I'm going to change up our, go back to our test. Okay, there we go. And it's scrolling, correct? <laughs> yes? I, don't, I don't see it scrolling. No. It's not scrolling? No, it's not scrolling. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Where, what is it looking? What are you looking at? Um, I'm looking at the steps one through five. Oh. Yeah, they didn't change. Maybe to change, we need to. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Go through that process, okay. And there is a chat. I don't know if that's a, a new, a new comment or not. Let's see here and share again. Okay, you have the test in front of you again. Yeah. Okay, Can you awesome. try scrolling? Yeah, it works. Yeah, all right. Okay, so let's see. Uh, we're just going to take a few minutes to look at the types of questions again, uh, since it didn't work the first time. So the first question, which choice helps establish the tone and style of the passage? Okay, these are basic strategies. You are not in detail yet. So you're going to notice the four answers that are possible and how they compare to each other. Okay. So, and, and because they're asking for the tone and passage and style of the passage, that's a, 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 a question that you might want to leave 
you might want to leave to the end after you've read the whole thing instead of scrolling down or reading down and then checking it. And then you might want to wait and see. In this case, we're going to apply, it says way more for answer A, an unusually large crowd, a whole bunch of unexpected people, or an enormous crowd of an unparalleled nature. Well, that's a great one to start with because you can see that there's a way more is a very, what kind of tone? Feel free to answer or chat it in. Or Karen, you can, you can answer for people. Is that a serious tone, way more? Or a, a casual tone? Or is it concise? So way more, it sounds kind of casual. That would not be in a, a uh, science book. Okay, that's for sure. So may, is that the tone? You're gonna go and check that. An unusually large crowd, very large crowd, kind of basic. What, and now C, notice C, a whole bunch of unexpected people. Okay, a whole bunch is pretty casual. And then D, an enormous crowd, that's more formal, of an unparalleled nature. But unparalleled nature, doesn't that mean enormous? So we don't need both. We don't need both. So you, you, once you've confirmed that it's, it's that way, way more is too casual for this, then you could go back, you can eliminate D because that's too wordy. Whole bunch is casual, way more is casual. Most likely at this point, you're gonna pick B, an unusually large crowd, a very large crowd, and you could, Pick it, circle it, circle number one, and move on, and then confirm it at the end, okay? Um, am I scrolling? Okay, good. Okay, uh, the next question is, we're not gonna go through it entirely, we're just gonna show you the, the types. At this point, the writer is considering adding the following sentence. There's your sentence. The university was established by Royal uh, Charter in 1948 should the writer make this addition here. So what you need to do is you need to read before and after, and then notice the question. This is one of those notice the question types. You're gonna focus on the explanation they give you. Okay, that's, we're gonna continue with that, because that's for more detail for the, uh, Friday. And then number three, we have, oopsie, where did number three go, there it is. Number three, you have for answer A, you have furthermore, you have as a result, you have by contrast, and you have a delete. Because the, the first record, one of the four C's on this test is to be concise. You wanna try your delete portion first, your answer D, because if you don't absolutely need that uh, introductory word, that transition word, don't put it. So that's the first thing you're gonna do. So that's a, an example of being concise. And we'll practice those next time. Um, number four, there's the word here up at the top. Preceding, precedence, proceedings, procedures. So this is really an expression of ideas, okay? This is one of the examples of expressions of ideas. You have to look at the context and it's also vocabulary. So if you, if you don't know one of those words, it may be harder, and we'll talk about strategies for what to do um, if you don't know a word, okay? And then the last thing we'll look at right now is number five, and if you notice, uh, answer A is a comma, answer B is a semicolon, C is a dash, and D is a period. So once we've learned those comma, comma and punctuation rules on Friday, we can go back to this and pick away at those answers and, and cross out the ones that by process of elimination that don't work. And then the, the one that's left, confirm it. Look at our notes on the, on the comma and, and punctuation rules. Yes, there it is. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. And do, does anybody have any questions about that? I hope you had time to write down some notes. Yeah. Karen? I'll ask a question. Yeah. 
All right, so I know you mentioned a lot of like different strategies students can use um, for the grammar section of the SAT. I would like to ask you, what is your favorite strategy? Uh, for that. Um, well, I, I'd say of all of them, you do have to know the rules. You can't go anywhere without knowing the rules, but then knowing the rules solidly, um, uh, you're gonna uh, use a process of elimination. Because like I said, I can't stress enough how important it is that, that you realize there can only be one right answer. So if I can say that's not right because, that then, then I'm, I have to be left with one answer. Usually what happens is that there's a couple answers that you can eliminate almost immediately, but then you're down to two answers. And then you can't just go, oh shoot, I picked the wrong one. You gotta go, why was that other one wrong? Why was this one wrong that I picked? So process of elimination, getting really good at figuring out why that second to, second to best answer is wrong. Yeah, and that's where, you know, I, as, as a tutor, I do hear quite a bit, oh, I picked the other one, darn it. And then they want to go on and, and not and not figure out why. And that's that's the key. So process of elimination. Thank yeah. you, Christine. Yeah. You're Anybody else would like to ask a question? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Friday at 1.30. We will go over uh, the comma and grammar and punctuation rules in detail and um, make sure you got a piece of paper in front of you or a way to, to copy some of the rules that I give you and um, be prepared to ask questions to be interactive as we go on. It'll be more and more interactive because we'll be looking at some basic some, some questions rather than just some basic strategies. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're very yes, welcome. Thank you. As Christine mentioned, we, we strongly, strongly encourage interaction. Um, we want you, you all to ask questions, to cr ask Christine questions, so this lecture can be a little bit more um, interactive, as Christine mentioned. So, um, yeah, also our next lecture, um, I know we have mentioned that our lectures will be held on Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. However, this week is an exception with Thursday's lecture, Thursday's webinar being canceled and being moved to Friday. So therefore, we will all see you here on Friday at 1.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. But before I leave, um, I would like to let you all know to please follow or please connect with Elite Tutoring on our Plexus page. Um, you can go ahead and um, I, well, I can go ahead and um, link, link, their, link their page on maybe one of the new speed posts that are coming up soon. Also, if you can all please download our Plexus app and leave us a review if you haven't yet. Um, you can also connect with, um, chat with my counselor if you have any questions regarding this webinar or regarding any future webinars that are about to come. Uh, yeah, we strongly encourage you all to do so. Um, and yeah, um, thank you everybody for sticking around and we'll see you all in the next one. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.